Hello everyone, this is Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones, which is a Lovecraftian CRPG set in the fictional city of Arkham, Massachusetts, as told by Lovecraft and its surroundings. And uh, I should probably preface this video by saying I'm, I'm a huge Lovecraft fan. I've read pretty much everything that he ever put out, and uh, he's probably my favorite non-modern author. And uh, this is the kind of game that has so many references to his works and things that you'll definitely get a lot more out of it if you've actually read a lot of his stories. However, you also don't have to know all that much about his works to actually enjoy the game. Similar to something like Bloodborne, or something like that, that has the cosmic horror theme, you don't necessarily need to actually understand all of the roots of where this comes from in order to actually get what's going on. But there are some really surprising, kind of obscure references to much smaller stories and things in this game that really impressed me, actually. Stories that I wasn't expecting to be referenced. And uh, so if you do have a bit of a, a knowledge of some of his catalog, then you'll actually, you'll probably see those and get a little bit extra out of it. But... As for the game itself, this is, as I mentioned, a pretty hardcore, actually, CRPG, although it's a very narratively focused one. Uh, rather than being a lot of combat, it's a lot more investigation and things like that, which is entirely fitting for the theme, because, you know, if you look at other mostly tabletop games that have done a Lovecraftian sort of universe, like um, the Call of Cthulhu tabletop game or Arkham Horror, those are more about investigation, uh, using your wits and your words to find your way around problems, because, it, as is the case with pretty much any sort of Lovecraftian horror story, combat, fighting, is sort of a last resort, more than something that you're actually encouraged to do. Fighting the absolutely horrible things is probably a bad idea, and uh, at the very least, you'll be fighting cultists and uh, other humans that have sort of gone insane, and that's also not very good for you either, because in this game you are not the chosen one. You're not here to save the world, because, well, you're a bit late for that, but you're also human, and uh, humans don't necessarily react all that well to actually, you know, killing other people all that often. It's generally not something that you want to do. So that is very much simulated in this sort of universe, and especially in this game in particular, by making combat pretty punishing. Uh, you have a sanity meter, as is pretty standard for a Lovecraftian horror game, and you also have something called angst, which is sort of like, as the developers put it, a negative experience bar, where if you build up too much of it, usually by killing people and the like, uh, you will actually have to choose a negative perk for yourself. Uh, every time you level up, you'll get uh, stat ups and be able to buy perks and stuff like that with you know your level up points, as is expected for a CRPG, but if you level up your angst instead, then you will have to choose all sorts of negative things, and the one that my current character has is actually a, uh, it basically makes them too attached to their party members, so that if they lose a party member, if they leave, or if they die, they take like a massive sanity hit for it because they just can't bear being alone, effectively, so that's the kind of thing that you're going to be dealing with. You're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, negative aspects to exploring this world, and the developers have also mentioned the idea that you're really not meant to explore a world like this without going crazy at least once or sort of being on the verge. And uh, that is pretty much tied in with the game mechanics because it's actually very difficult not to develop some really negative aspects. Like, for instance, you may notice that the screen has a sort of uh, a filter around it, especially around the edges where things get a little uh, difficult to read and stuff like that. And that's because my character has actually developed paranoia from going insane once, or, well, nearly going insane once. And uh, although I managed to get back from the brink, it did leave me with paranoia. And uh, this seems to be permanent. From what the developers have said, you can't cure mental disorders that you get. Uh, you can get all sorts of things like mania, paranoia, uh, I think there's a couple others. And what's really interesting about it is these not only are permanent flaws to your character, but they're actually very meaningful flaws. And at first, I really didn't like this, to be honest. I, I felt that I was being punished a little bit too much for something that I couldn't really help because it was just because I was in combat too often and uh, I couldn't really choose not to go into some of those combats. Most of them were sort of forced on me. But I discovered that I actually kind of like it after a while because although it was sort of annoying at first, there's a couple things about the system. One, as you gain your sanity back, the uh, filter on the screen will actually get less severe, so you'll be able to see things more clearly. I still think it's a little bit, uh, a bit of an eyesore sometimes, so I kind of wish that it wasn't there, but, you know, especially because it's something permanent. But the other thing that the uh, paranoia does, for instance, is it makes it to where occasionally you will hit your own people in combat, your own party members, because, well, you're paranoid and you're afraid they're going to hurt you, so you'll actually lose a turn to actually, you know, damaging them a little bit. And also, you'll notice that some of your dialogue options will change. When you mouse over some of the dialogue, it will be crossed out and it will uh, 
put up this weird red text that says something very different, or it's like the same kind of idea as the dialogue option it replaced, but a much less sane version of that. And it's actually really interesting because I very, very rarely do you see games that actually are willing to give your character a very permanent, very noticeable flaws that affect them in gameplay for the rest of the game. And although it took me a minute to actually warm up to the idea, given that it's a Lovecraftian horror kind of theme, that's actually kind of par for the course for uh, for cosmic horror protagonists. They are not chosen ones. Uh, they are very human and they're very fragile, and very bad things tend to happen to them so that by the end of the story they're just sort of barely holding on. And uh, that's actually... I, I was surprised at how much the game actually captured that. Now, in standard fare for CRPGs, you have quite a few stats that you can put points into in different uh, classes and specializations that you can choose from. The character creation is actually pretty good. It's uh, very Arkham Horror-ish. And uh, you can be all sorts of things, and uh, there are usually very many ways around a particular obstacle. For instance, my character is an occultist with some uh, investigation going on, so they're sort of a, a scholarly occultist. And this has led to some really interesting ways to solve problems. Just as a couple of examples, for instance, early on you'll be needing to find a safe very early in the game. And once you get to the safe, you notice that it's actually behind this brick wall. And there are like five different ways to get past that brick wall to get to the safe, depending on what kind of character you're playing. If you're playing a, uh, an investigative character like mine, you can actually do these, um, there are sometimes these scenes that are kind of like point-and-click adventures, sort of, where the it'll fill up the screen with some sort of puzzle that you'll be able to solve. In this case, it was very simple because it was an early game when it was just find the loose brick, and I had enough investigation to find it, and there we go, the wall crumbled down. However, if you're like a really brawny character and you have like a crowbar or something like that with you, you can just pry the wall down. Or if you're a very uh, sciencey character, you can make an acid and melt the wall. Or if you're none of those, if you want to, you can just go back outside to one of the, uh, the bodyguards, the sort of mob toughs that are guarding the uh, bank that you were in, and just ask him to break the wall down for you. And for a couple of uh, cigarettes, which are the money in this game because, you know, the world has ended then uh, he'll do it for you. So there's a ton of different ways to go through a lot of the problems. And uh, as a more, I guess, a later game example, there's a point where you need to get into a specific room to actually talk to someone. Well, really, it's to investigate the room. Talking to them is kind of optional. But you have to get to a room in this hotel, and there are lots of ways to do it. You can actually just, like, I think you can just straight up kill the person that's in the room if you want to, because he's uh, from the mob, although that's not necessarily a smart idea, but I think you can. You can also, like, drink him under the table, challenge him to a drinking game, but you got to have the stats for it. And uh, what I did, since I'm an occultist, I went next door and found out that uh, the uh, room next door was haunted by a ghost. So I used the occult skill to summon and bind the ghost to my will, and then go and haunt him out of the room, which was kind of great when I learned that you could actually do that. So, in terms of, like, CRPG, solve your problems multiple ways kind of gameplay, this definitely has that. Uh, there are lots and lots of ways around a lot of your problems, and uh, some things are more obvious than others, and that gets me to one of the more negative aspects of the game, something I have a bit of a problem with, in that sometimes the game is a little bit too vague. In CRPGs, you're often given a lot of numbers, but you will see a certain lack of numbers in this game on various fronts, especially in things like combat, for instance. Uh, some of the more obvious things that are missing are like hit chance. Uh, that's a very common thing, you know, when you hover your cursor over an enemy, it will roll your stats for you and tell you around your chance to hit. Uh, there is no hit chance in this game that is visible to you, at least. There obviously is, because you can miss and graze and crit and stuff like that, but the basic hit chance and graze chance and all that, mm, no, it doesn't tell you. And uh, another thing is the enemy's remaining health is also very uh, vague. It seems to be related to these red tick marks that appear above their head as they take damage. And although you can sort of guess around how much health they have based on how much damage it takes to make these tick marks appear, because four of them will appear, and then after the fourth one, they die. So you can sort of guesstimate, but the thing is it seems to be really inconsistent which, with uh, how much damage it actually takes. Like For instance, I had an enemy that took nine damage, on its first turn, which put one tick mark above its head. So you can sort of guess from that that it has, you know, around, say, 40 HP or so, because it takes uh, about five tick marks to kill them, although you don't see the fifth one. It's after they have four and they get another one, basically, they die. So you could say about nine times five, anywhere from, like, 40 to 45, depending on how much damage it, they, how close they are to the second one, which you can't really see. So it's vague, but you can sort of guess around how much they need. However, the character then took an extra, uh, I think it was two damage from like a critical failure, and then that didn't add another tick to them, so it was clear that they probably were on like the closer to 45-ish HP. And then uh, they took another nine damage the next turn and died immediately. 
I don't know how that works, but they only had one of those little tally marks next to their head, so f somehow the same amount of damage that only gave them one gave them the other three to four they needed to die. Uh, I don't really, yeah, so it's a bit inconsistent. It, for the most part, it works. It's simple and vague, but I guess that's kind of the idea. You're not really supposed to know exactly how much health something has, and there isn't, as far as I can tell, a way to tell. But uh, that's, I guess, the problem with a CRPG is you make a lot of decisions. You make a lot of very important decisions, decisions that can have very long-term impacts for your character and for your party in general, and that's just how a CRPG works. So when a game doesn't give you all of the numbers, it can feel like you can't, you're not getting the uh, the information you need to make informed decisions all the time. And this game does have that problem sometimes. It's not too bad, but sometimes there are some things that are a little too vague, a little obscure, and uh, it makes it difficult to actually be able to tell what you need to be doing, what would be the best way around it. And sometimes it can feel like you, because the game is so difficult and there are so many uh, repercussions for things like combat and other things like that, sometimes it can kind of feel like you're being punished for not knowing something that the game won't tell you. <laughs> there are a couple other interesting parts to combat, like for instance the spellcasting system is pretty interesting. It uses sanity as fuel, which makes sense in terms of the uh, Lovecraftian universe. Uh, of most of the time magic spells and rituals and the like are very much based around sort of touching a little too close to horrible things at the edges of sanity, so usually using rituals and spells and the like that connect to those things damages your mind a little bit, and uh, that is the case in this game. You have to be very careful when you cast spells, because you'll be losing sanity from many other sources as well, so you have to make sure you have enough if you want to cast a spell. They are generally very powerful, so it's worth it, but you have to make sure you can actually afford it in terms of, you know, your character's mental status. And you'll also see occasionally there are these, um, as you can see in the background right now, those light blue hexes. Those are escape hexes. There's an interesting part in the combat where you don't actually have to kill everything. In most combat scenarios, you, if, you, if you want to succeed and actually, you know, beat the encounter, you don't have to destroy everything. Usually you only have to kill about one enemy, sometimes two. And then uh, after a couple turns, those hexes will show up behind the enemy that is furthest to the right as a representation of you kind of running past them and getting away. And if you get to those and escape, that will actually allow you to beat the encounter still, and not technically count as fleeing, but also not have to kill everything, although you will miss out on loot. Uh, that's another in interesting thing about the combat. You don't actually get a lot of loot from combat unless you spend actions during combat to loot the bodies on the ground. You can't just win and loot everything afterwards. You have to loot during combat, so you have to sort of be pretty uh, specific about your placement and, and action point usage and stuff to get the most out of combat. And like I said, it's very punishing and something that you really shouldn't be doing all that often. But occasionally when you do need to, you'll notice that the uh, the combat is, we'll say it's fairly basic for a CRPG. You know, it's not like Pillars of Eternity or anything that, that complicated, but it does its job. And uh, it's, especially with the spell system and the like, is actually fairly interesting. Although, again, it has a certain lack of of uh, numbers, like, you know, graze chance and hit chance and stuff like that, and enemy health, that can sometimes make it a bit frustrating, but it is one of those things that you can get used to. But as for the actual narrative itself, the game is basically dripping with atmosphere. This is clearly made by people that know Lovecraft's stories inside and out and are, like, in love with the setting and have created something that is really really a love letter to the setting. It's very detailed, it's very atmospheric, there's a ton of weird stuff going on that you can sort of notice, and like I said, there's a lot of references to <clears throat> stories that aren't often referenced in cosmic horror settings, you know, like some of his earlier, more obscure short stories and things, like uh, In the Vaults and some other stuff that I've noticed, like Herbert West Reanimator, which isn't quite as uh, obscure, but it's still one that you don't hear as often, and The Outsider, and uh, I'm waiting for a cool air reference, I'm waiting for that. But there are lots of little nods to stories here and there that you, if you've read the stories, you will get and be happy about. And if you haven't, they still have a, a nice bit of atmosphere and sting to them to actually uh, help you get immersed in the whole cosmic horror setting. And as far as the setting goes, it does it really, really well. And it's, you know, it's about exploration, it's about investigation, it's not really about combat. So I don't so much mind that the combat is basic but functional, because it doesn't really need to be anything more than that as long as the rest of the game holds up, and for the most part it does. Uh, the investigation is satisfying, the quest solving is varied and interesting depending on what kind of character you're playing, and the overall narrative is pretty fascinating. The whole idea is that the old ones, including Cthulhu himself, have come back and have taken the Earth back, effectively, and in this uh, Black Day, as it was called, the fictional city of Arkham has been sort of put into its own little pocket dimension, and you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on and I mean, survive, basically. You're not really trying to save the world, like I said, because you're too late for that, and you're not trying to be any sort of chosen one, you're just trying to live and stay sane as long as you can. And that makes for a very interesting setting. 
the game definitely does the cosmic horror thing very well when there are this many references to the stories and this many things that you can find that are really super interesting and uh, ways to interact with things depending on what sort of character you're playing and the like that actually really help you immerse yourself in the investigative noir world of like a 1920s uh, Massachusetts. There are also some pretty interesting elements of how you have to play your character. Like, you can actually choose what type of character you, you have. Like, for instance, a materialistic one, a nihilistic one, a, a humanistic one, and a couple others. There are six different choices, and those actually help you gain sanity if you roleplay that character well. And one of the best parts about it is a lot of times they are not marked in a conversation that say, this will give you sanity. It's just something that you can roleplay, and if you do it right, then you will you know, you'll get some bonuses for it, which is nice. I like the idea that you can make a certain type of character and you actually get rewarded for being thematically consistent with the type of character that you're actually trying to play. So as, like, an occult-based character, if I choose lots of knowledge-seeking and occult interest options, I get extra sanity back because that is the sort of thing that my character would say. And that's a really cool system that I definitely want to see more of in, like, hardcore RPGs, the idea that there's sort of like a soft roleplay mechanic where you don't have to be that way. But if you're thematically consistent with your character, it's actually a bonus for you because it, it makes the most sense to be that way. Overall, I think it's a, uh, a pretty great game. It has a really nice art style, and some of the other uh, creatures in the art style are deliberately drawn very differently to look just creepy. Like the Mego, for instance, are actually drawn in a 3D art style that makes them really stand out and look, well, alien, which is exactly the point. And uh, so on and so forth. I don't really want to go through a bunch of spoilers or a bunch of later game stuff in the background, which is why I recorded some earlier game stuff that you're seeing right now, because I didn't want to spoil a whole lot, because some of the places that you visit and the things that you do and the people and uh, not people that you interact with are pretty fascinating, and uh, the game does a very good job at actually creating this atmosphere that really draws you in. So overall, I think it's pretty awesome, and it's a, it's a really good love letter to, well, Lovecraft and his works and the people that really enjoy those works. It has its quirks, it has some weird decisions about it that sometimes mean that you feel like you don't have quite enough information to make the right decision at times. It can be a little bit frustrating to come to terms with, with the sort of vagaries of the mechanics, and uh, it's also just a little weird here and there when it comes to some of the things that it expects of you, like the food system and how often you actually have to eat and the resting system, and there's just a lot of really interesting mechanics, and I, I have to kind of applaud the developers for going in a direction that you don't often see whether or not it works every single time. I appreciate the fact that there are some really weird sort of permanently damaging decisions and stuff for your character that can actually happen that uh, a lot of developers would definitely not have gone for. So that is Stygian Reign of the Old Ones. It's available right now on Steam for $30. Uh, a bit steep, but it does have quite a bit of replayability. And uh, it's also, until October 3rd, available for $25 on a sale for its launch. So thank you guys very much for watching. The link is in the description below, as always. And I'll see you next time.